cruise news time. And look, I've got some cruise headlines for you today. I, I want to talk more about Hurricane Fiona. Uh, there's some interesting stuff going on with a lot of different cruise lines. But the one story I can't wait to talk about is the dude. The dude, the Carnival Cruise Passenger, upset because Carnival Cruise Line has restricted has restricted his food. <laughs> I'm, I'm not kidding. Uh, cruise news and my views. Let's talk about it. Hey, 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 what's up, everybody? Welcome to La Little Loca. I'm your host, Tony, here with the latest cruise news and views right for your face. How about that? It is Saturday, the 24th of September, 2022, and we got a lot to talk about. Cruise news story number one. Let's do an update on Hurricane Fiona. Hurricane Fiona made land in Canada this morning. There's reports coming out from Prince Edward Island from areas of Nova Scotia where there's a lot of high wind, a lot of water, and power outages. But it does seem like Fiona did not hit the mainland as hard as she could have, and so that could be the silver lining. She will continue to churn north and hopefully eventually uh, get out of Canada and uh, go to be nothing in the northern seas. So Fiona probably has had her day. She's on her way out, making room for other storms. We're going to talk about that, but I do want to swing back around to the conversation yesterday about us canceling our cruise. And I just want to make two things clear. Never once was I worried that I would be unsafe on the Holland America cruise ship. I continue to hold the idea that cruise lines are better equipped than anybody to keep their passengers safe uh, during a multitude of situations and a hurricane storm, one of them. I've been on a cruise ship in a typhoon and I, you know, it was rocky weather, but I felt perfectly safe on that cruise ship. And so regarding this cruise, there was no concern for me about my safety on the cruise ship. Uh, so that's one thing. The second thing is, and I've said this for a long time, if you don't feel comfortable cruising for any reason and you don't have to go, don't go. And uh, that was really how our decision came to be. We wanted to go on Holland America and we wanted to experience that ship, but we also wanted to go to the Maritimes and experience the Maritimes without issue. We've been to places before where hurricanes had just come through. We've seen hurricane disruption. We've been doing this long enough to understand what it's like to cruise post hurricane. And there was enough concern there that our cruise would be disrupted, that possibly ports would be missed, that some of the ports that we would go to may not be able to offer everything that we'd hoped that it would offer and uh, taking that in totality you know there was enough concern there for us to not go on the cruise uh, you know a lot of people said oh well this was a fully gratis cruise you know this is the first time we'd ever been offered a free cruise and even that's been an interesting concept because I do like the idea of paying my way so I don't feel like somebody's giving me something but it was very generous of Holland America but just because something is free doesn't mean that it has more value than your time. Yeah, just because somebody's giving you something for free doesn't mean that... A lot of people are like, oh, it's free, you should go. But uh, a commodity to us more precious than money uh, is time. And so I didn't want to go up there and just maybe do a bunch of sea days. Who knows what it's going to turn out like. I hope the cruise goes well. I know there's a lot of people on it. But uh, again, two things that I believe are true. Cruise lines will keep you safe in all circumstances. I continue to hold that to be true. And then the second thing that I hold to be true, if you have concern and you can get out of the cruise that you're going on, don't go on it. Uh, that you know, Those are two things that I continue to hold. And I appreciate all the feedback, both positive and negative, yesterday. It was really interesting to see uh, some people's personalities in their comments. It was interesting to see some the way that people approach it. So again, I, I love the community. I love the community in the comments. It really is enriching. It really s says a lot about people. But the interesting thing that I did not know when I filmed that video yesterday was a, a little thing called TD9, Tropical Depression number nine. And uh, as I released that video yesterday and as the afternoon rolled on, TD9 became a broader conversation and now TD9, Tropical Depression 9, it has a new name. It is now a tropical storm named Ian. Tropical Storm Ian uh, probably will become a hurricane and it is making its way to the west possibly swinging by Cuba and making a turn right into the port of Tampa. Those are what some of the models are looking like. Now, I live about an hour north of Tampa, and uh, so it's going to be interesting. Maybe Monday or Tuesday, I could be living out that hurricane life right here at my house. Uh, the models do a couple things. If this thing comes across... If it comes across the land part of Cuba, it may change its trajectory and it uh, may weaken it. But if it's able to swing all the way west of Cuba, it may be the perfect storm 
perfect storm to actually come right into Tampa Bay as a full-on hurricane. So we'll be watching that. So uh, yeah, Fiona, she's almost gone. And now we've got uh, TD9, now Tropical Storm Ian, possibly Hurricane Ian uh, as as we uh, as we go through the next couple days. So it should be fun here at the La Lida Loca headquarters. Cruise news story number two, the Volendam. Do you know the Volendam? It's one of those damn ships from Holland America Line. It's been doing humanitarian work, housing uh, Ukrainian refugees in the Netherlands. Uh, that contract is over, and now the Volendam is back in service for passengers bringing all of Holland America's ships into service for passengers since the cruise restart. Way to go, Holland America Line, uh, for a couple things. For, you know, of course, chartering that ship out for humanitarian relief, and then also for getting everything back into service. She's loading up passengers today on the 24th for a 14-day cruise, and so uh, that's exciting news. Cruise news story number three, let's talk Sapphire Princess. This is another cruise ship that's not been in service for passengers in the last two and a half years. Sapphire Princess in LA, loading up passengers today for a 14-day cruise it's another cruise ship coming back to work again it's you know we're so far removed from the cruise restart it's been well over a year since we started cruising again and so it's hard to imagine that maybe not all cruise ships are working again still challenges with staffing in certain parts of the world uh, but yes uh, we see another cruise ship coming online and this time it's the sapphire princess how about that? Cruise news story number four, another story about the brand new Crystal Cruises. We talked about it the other day that they're embroiled in a lawsuit with Royal Caribbean Group over the hire of an ex, an ex employee from Royal Caribbean's group from Silver Seas. Well, now there's a big announcement coming out from the new Crystal Cruises that they will be a member of CLIA. So Crystal Cruises used to be owned by Genting. The brand went defunct. The brand was resurrected by a firm called Amber Crombie and Kent. And now they have applied and they are a part of CLIA, the Cruise Line International Association. Uh, obviously this adds some credibility to the Crystal Cruises resuming their brand. And so now Crystal Cruises will be a voice in that CLIA organization. CLIA represents, I believe it's over 99% of cruise companies, cruise ships out there. And so Crystal Cruise is in the fold. It's good to be a part of something like the Loca fam. Maybe it's a good time for me to invite you to subscribe. If you like staying, if you wanna be a part of something, be a part of Loca fam. And the way you do that is by subscribing. If you'd like to stay up to date with everything that's going on in cruising, please consider subscribing with the notification bell on. That way you don't miss out on any of these episodes. And let me tell you one thing that I'm made fun of a lot. I'm uh, People like to make fun of other people's dreams. Shame on you. If you have a dream out there, I support you. And uh, I have a dream. I have a dream to get to 18 million subscribers one day. I hope to live another 50 years, and it may take me 50 years to get to 18 million subscribers. But Dag Nabbit, that's my dream, and shame on you if you want to ridicule me for my dream. Why, why can't you, what does my dream hurt you? I, I do think it's good to have big lofty goals because it really drives you forward to uh, believe that you can do something beyond yourself. And so I would challenge each of you to have a lofty goal. And if you want to support my dreaming big, like I'm Kermit the Frog singing Rainbow Connection, if you want to support that kind of vibe, just please subscribe. How about that? It rhymed. I didn't even think it would. Please subscribe. Notification bell on. Doesn't cost anything. It helps us get the word out to more people. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you in advance. All right. We're not yet to the carnival food story, which I can't wait to get to. I got to talk about a cruise port that is limiting passengers. We saw the writing on the wall, uh, like 8675309. We saw the number on the wall that the folks there in Bahaba, Maine, were, they were going to limit cruise ships, and they've done just that. They said, look, uh, we're the local people. And we, 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 we have the cruise tourism, but we have too much of it, and we don't want as much of it, and we voted on it. Here you go, in your face. Oh, well, here's the deal. There's two months that book in the tourism season, April and November. They voted to allow no cruise ships, no cruise passengers into the, into the little town of Bar Harbor during those months. So cruising is out, and then they have limited the amount of cruise passengers that can come to that town during the other months. The agreement that was struck limits cruiser arrivals to 30,000 per month in May and June, 40,000 per month in July and August, 
and 65,000 per month in September and October. I don't know how I feel about it. I've always had an affinity for Bar Harbor. I know it's a part of that East Coast cruising scene. I've always looked forward to arriving in Bar Harbor on a cruise ship and exploring the town and exploring the food and supporting the local economy. You know, when you hear these stories about people don't want you there, I, I don't know what to make of it. Some people say, well, if they don't want us there, they should stop going. But like 45% of the people want us there. 45% of the people want the tourism dollar. And there, it's always the great discussion whether cruisers actually infuse a lot of money into these local economies. Is really the cruise business based on what the port gets per passenger for cruise ships stopping there? Is it more about the port function than the you know local economy function? That's always the debate, but obviously we wanna go places where people want us. It's a bummer that they uh, don't want cruisers as much in Bar Harbor, but still seems like a lot of cruisers, 65,000 in a, a month. Still seems like a lot of cruisers. So I don't know, when you hear these stories, does it taint the way you feel? Taint. Does it taint the way you feel about uh, a, a location or it, do you understand it? Or does it make you not wanna go there? Or, does, or do you not care? Uh, leave a comment below, how about that? All right, that's the hard hitting recap of the cruise news. There's still a few more stories, but I need to make a show tomorrow. You know how that goes. Uh, but there's still more stories to talk about. Tune in tomorrow. But let's talk about the guy that reached out to Carnival Cruise Line upset. Upset because his food had been restricted. Now here's the way it goes. There was a guy and he was eating in the main dining room and he wanted some more of the food that he enjoyed in the main dining room on Carnival. And he said, hey, could I get some food to go to take back to my cabin? And they said, uh, no, no, you cannot. We will not allow you to take food from the main dining room back to your cabin. Now this was a restriction I did not even know about. Uh, just about anywhere else on a Carnival cruise ship, you can get a Guy's Burger, you can go to the uh, buffet, you can go all those places, uh, Shaq's Big Chicken, you can load your food up on a plate, you can take it anywhere you want onto the cruise ship and eat it up. But apparently you cannot request extra food from the main dining room and take it back to your cabin. He reached out to brand ambassador John Heald and John Heald verified they do not want you doing that because well, there's a different set of dishes for the main dining room is one reason. I know the guy has to give a reason. I found that to be an interesting reason. They don't want to mix and match the main dining room dishes with the dishes from other places, which I get. There's some pretty cool, you know, uh, plates there in the main dining room with some Americana, some history on it. Do you know what I'm talking about? I actually like those little plates in the main dining room on Carnival. And so they don't want those all over the cruise ship. Did you know that? You can order as much food as you want in the main dining room. You can get three entrees, three appetizers, four dishes desserts. Uh, you can get a, a, you know, a fruit plate with every course. However, uh, you got to eat all that right there. You cannot tote it out. Do you agree or disagree with that? Do you think you should be able to go and get main dining room food to go? Do you think this is crazy? Do you think the guy's being unreasonable? Uh, what do you think? Leave a comment below. Thank you so much for checking out the show today. I was reminded of this video where I talked about things you should not do on a cruise ship because you can do them at home. Uh, this is an oldie but goodie. Make sure you check that one out next. This is Tony for La Lido Loca. And until the next time, we'll see you on the Lido. Bye.